All right, I have the IDVM app that goes with the 510 meter that I had a video on earlier. And the application is pretty interesting. This is the beta version. It's not the final version that's going to be on the App Store later. Uh, on the entry screen, you'll notice you have, it says files and meter. Go to meter. It's actually already connected. Since I'm already connected via Bluetooth, you go to meter and it's it's connected already. That is a graph mode. Uh, when you have it in portrait, it'll actually show you two screens. And then if you turn it, if you have the phone right side up, you can go from one way or the other and it should change the screens. Go from this way, it'll give you that screen. Go upright, and then over this way, and it'll show you the bottom screen. You can change the screens by holding down, waiting for a gear to appear. Once you see that gear, tap the gear, and it'll allow you to change things such as your background. I like the slate, and it'll allow you to change the sine wave colors. A lot of options, and it's it's configurable to I guarantee you to have something you're probably going to like. Then when you're done, you tap the gear again; it'll flip it over. Go to your other screen. You can put both either screen on bottom or top. You have the same selections. You can swipe, give you that like the main display. That's like the first option. That's your second option. You've got a graph that fills up whatever color you've selected. Um, like I selected green so that would fill up with a green bar as it gets voltage. Let me see if I can manipulate this plug to show you. See, and plus shows you the number, and you can move your, you pinch and drag, it, it shortens the, like if you pinch to the middle and drag out, it will actually decrease the field. If you pinch, do this, it increases the field. If you pinch and do this, it decreases the field. So right now my range, if I drag it out to zero, we've got 120, goes up to 150 volts. We've made it smaller. It defaults to 150 to show everything. If I do that, zero to four hundred so that's interesting it'll do it on the analog looking screen as well pinch and drag decrease increase the range so if you want a broader spectrum just closer tighter to what you want to do a bit like that and then if you want if you're working on higher voltage 240 0 to 240. So that's pretty neat. But you can select uh, this screen. It shows you your value, what mode you're in, uh, your min value, your maximum value, and the average value, and, and sample counts. And it'll show you the graph. That's what's on the bottom. Now I can change that graph to be the same. Okay, but on the top one I would like to have, I think I like that, that's, that's interesting. Now let's try the pinch and zoom. Drag it out. Let's uh, 
press and hold to get rid of the gear. Now let's see if we can pinch and zoom. Thousand bolts. Three hundred and twenty. Now in order to get this one to change on me, instead of dragging it back and forth to move the value like I did on the bar graph, this one I had to kind of hold with both and rotate it like that. Went from 40 to 240 and I think it maxes out at 320, 300 volts. So kind of rotate it on the line to get your zero value and then it's like that. So that's interesting. On the graph, I don't know if that pinch and zoom works on that or not. It does. Look at that. Sorry. Shows your sample counts down here on the bottom, but it shows your uh, voltage on the top. 500 volts. Pinch and zoom. Put 120 kind of in the middle set it at 150 volt range, sets it more in the mid range. So that's interesting, that's your pinch and zoom value that, that it was talking about in the manual that is downloadable, it's going to be downloadable later. On your menu, this doesn't move. If you want to see all of it, you have to go in portrait mode and it'll give you all of your options. If you go home, it'll actually take you to the beginning screen, like this. It says I'm connected. All right. Meter selection. If you're not connected via Bluetooth, it'll show you what you've got. It'll show you your emulator. It'll show you your meter that you actually are connected to, or you can connect to. I'm already connected, so I don't have to worry about that meter settings power timeout meter settings if I wanted to change my power timeout to I don't know I guess any time I wanted to just if I wanted to make it a uh, 10 hours I could do 600 save So 600 of inactivity until power off. That's if you don't want it to shut off. I mean, you give it some astronomical number to where you shut it off. That's fine. Uh, I believe in the settings for recording. I believe you can set the time. And I think that overrides. If you had this set for 60 minutes, I think that overrides that. The, the automatic power off would be in conjunction with the recording value, not this value. They defaulted at 15. App settings. Allow display to sleep. Like the iPhone, allow the iPhone display to sleep on inactivity. So if you want to say power on your battery and you, you want the iPhone, internal iPhone app, instead of this this application running keeping it awake you wanted it to power down your screen you could uh, iPad landscape full screen so when you turn it will make it like a phone so when you turn it one way it's all full screen instead of having the double image sideways and you can hide the IDVM emulator it shows up on your meter selection screen voice reporting this will allow you your speech rate to sound normal, to sound slow, to sound fast. I mean, you can have a lot of fun with that. Uh, when you're doing voice. 0, 0.0 millivolts. That's normal. 0, 0.0 millivolts. 122.6 volts. 122.4 volts. You can change the, how many times she says it. 122.5 volts. 122.4 volts. 
122 points, 122 points. 122.7 volts, 122.6 volts, 122.8 volts, 122.8 volts, 122.8 volts, 122.9 volts. Go for the smoker's voice. 122.9 volts, 122.8 volts, 122.8 volts. 122.9 volts. 122.8 volts. One being the default. 122.8 volts. 122.7 volts. 122.8 volts. 122.8 volts. But you can change that to uh, 1 every 3 seconds, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, once every minute. Five's pretty good, but it's kind of funny. The, the voices are really funny. Alerts, you can set your, your maximum alert value, your minimum alert value. It will give you, generate a tone. It'll only generate it one time. In other words, once it hits that, it'll beep. So if you're not there, you're not going to hear it. If you're not paying attention, it doesn't continue to beep. Recording, that will set your mode, timed recording, normal recording. Uh, right now it's time set for 12 hours, so it'll take every every 10 seconds it'll take a value for 12 hours, and then it should shut down. That meter should shut down. I can change it here, tell it to go normal. So if I start and stop recording with the record button, that means right now I'm going to save that because that means right now the meter has been told, okay, you power down once the record button, or you don't power down while it's recording and the recording stops once I repress the record button again and then from there on your recorded data you can download the recorded data and it'll show you that and it'll show you that it'll show you that what mode it was in how many samples were taken this can take 20,000 samples guaranteed uh, once every 10 seconds that comes out to 55.5 hours I believe uh, a sample every two seconds gives you about 11 hours of recording. Once you have those, you can go back to your home, go to files, show you the file. It'll show you the graph, it'll show you a bunch of information. It samples. It'll show you a list view of the samples and what the views, the numbers were. Details. Going to details, you can change uh, the name of the file to the place you're at. The description, you can say low voltage on the compressor contactor. Put your name under user. Uh, location it'll actually you can bring up it'll bring up a map I've had it auto locate before but then the last time I messed with it I actually had to put punch in the location hit this little button here a little icon right there and it brought up a map and I zoomed in on the location and tapped it it gives you the coordinates you can't type in a name and but in the description of the location you can type it that's like where I work at at the school cancel that. Once you download it or you have all that information you can forward it. I uh, selected email. You can select web server, email. Uh, PDF is selected. You can select ping image and it'll, it'll also send a PDF unless you unselect it. So you have to select and it'll send it. It sends it as a zip format. So if you don't have anything that'll read a zip format on your device you need to have a desktop computer in order to do that to view the file that's the only thing I didn't really like um, I sent an email asking can that be changed or is that a concern that a PDF might be too large to view and that's why they did a zip format of course the information screen here Gives you a brief synopsis of the application.
meter update. I've got the latest one installed. It kind of goes into A, B, A, and it gives you a version. Version 15, version 16 is type B, so like version 17 would be type A again. Notice the A's and B's are black and red. And it explains what the last version did. Firmware images are assigned to type value of either A or B that determines in which the two areas of meter's memory image is to be installed. You can only upgrade or downgrade from an image of one type to the other. So if you are currently running type A image, you can only switch to another of type B. So, just for giggles, say I'm going to update it. I may really screw something up here. Update meter with version 15. Yes, I will. And it downloads that there. So let's see what happens when we come back here. Alright, we're about to the end of the firmware update. Disconnected. Meter is restarting. I'm connected. Now I have put my meter in millivolts. Voltage AC, as you can see. The issue I'm having is I have a fluke amp clamp and it uses millivolts AC to report. I was told by Redfish that that should work. Jim Bergman uses a milliamps AC amp clamp meter, current transformer, in his work on the video, and it takes advantage of the COM in the microamp milliamp outputs. Mine has to use the voltage Com outputs and I verified with Redfish that should work. The only thing I did different was I updated my firmware to the newer version available. So that's why I reverted back to the older version. I want to see now if it's going to work. Got it on millivolts. Turned it on. and I get nothing. I'm not getting any reading at all. So I'm beginning to wonder, and I've used different millivolt AC current clamps. I've used, I've used the field piece, <clears throat> and I've used this one. I've used the ACH4, the ACH3, they're all millivolt AC conversion. You know, one millivolt equals one amp. And I'm running 2.4 amps on this line, and it's not working. So it wasn't the firmware. So I'm going to have to contact Redfish again and ask them, is it an issue to where they're not working? The current transformer clamp that runs off of milliamps AC seems to work a lot better. Doesn't work with uh, the one that goes into the voltage and uses millivolts AC. It's not working properly. And I've tried different ranges. Tried like the voltage range, like the six. I've got it set on six volts. Turn it on. just doesn't respond, not responding at all. So that's one of the issues that I'm uh, concerned about. But that's a brief overview of the app. It's very interesting. Turn off the heater. 
I hope this has been somewhat helpful just to give you a little insight on the application. I haven't been, I haven't been given a specific date of when it will be released, but uh, Patrick said that it was supposed to coincide with True Tech Tools going into full sale mode of this uh, meter that it will should be updated, released, and ready to go. And they are looking into any of the bugs they have, so that's why any little inconsistency I see, I try to uh, report back to him since he's been pretty forthcoming with his uh, information. So that is the application. The redfishinstruments.com should also have the new book available. The Redfish Manual. They don't have it on there yet. 21 pages. Pretty interesting. Got a lot of information on it. Gives you a pretty dis descriptive display of every button, every port, what it's used for, how to use it with your leads. It doesn't say much about current clamps, but it tells you how to measure amperage with your leads and milliamps with your leads and diode testing. How to clean tells you where the fuses are located and how to get to those. So it's pretty nice too. So that is an overview of the app. Touched on the manual. I hope this has been somewhat helpful for everybody. I appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.